What's going on guys? This is my wife in the background who's probably getting irritated right with me right now as I talk on the camera as she gives me the death stare as she talks to her sister. 20 bucks says I'm probably going to die after making this short clip. So as I make that short clip there, just wanted to do it just to irritate her because I know sometimes it just bugs her to death. Uh, I'm also watching the Baltic Super right now because why not because it's freaking awesome. And uh, I try to support everybody. I let their videos just run. Well, I shouldn't just say let them run because I actually enjoy watching them. But I let them run while I work on my car. But today, we are back from Cruise Week. Saw my last video there with the Stereon and the Conquest. Yeah, if I have that right. Um, and today, we are going to put this up on jack stands because why not? Of course, it's pure function. That's all we ever do for function is put it up on jack stands. But anyways, we got a couple things. One, I got to check underneath the car. I had a little fun. Did some burnouts. A little hard in the car. The, the rear end starting to make some noise. I'm hoping it didn't chip a tooth. I think it's just... I did something to the plates and the OS guy can diff, uh, so that might be it. Another thing is uh, the one rubber hanger on the middle of the exhaust popped off. I'm not sure how that happened, so we'll take a look at that. Thirdly, but not lastly, we have new LED lights. Now, you guys know I'm an LED light fanatic. I love bright lights. I like being able to see at night. I'm like a big pet peeve with that. My eyes are terrible as it is. If I can't see at night, it drives me crazy. I've gone through a ton this time around. We've got lights from JDM A-Star. Now these things are pretty new. Uh, they have their ZS chips, which I've seen around. Pretty, pretty excited about this. And some of the old, ugly gold things I have now, they're nice and black, which actually matches with the car a lot better. Uh, they gave me 9,005 and 9,006 lights. So we'll be putting them in here shortly. But let's first, let's get to the other parts of the car. All right, now that the pig is back up in the air, I didn't quite put it up as high as I usually do, so it's gonna be a little bit tighter. One thing I wanted to check, cruise week. I bought them out a couple times. Did I hit anything there? No, no, but this, this I'm so stoked on. This did its job. This cover here did exactly what it's supposed to do. Kept my engine bay super clean. Obviously the pipes and stuff over here were exposed, but even still, like everything didn't get smashed with dirt and crap, which I'm super stoked about. Um, I'm really happy I have this. Uh, again, this is from Doula Design. I want to list this down, down below for you guys. But everything else looks copacetic. A little bit of salt residue on some of the parts. Looks good. Oh boy. That rear trans seal is really leaking. All right guys, one thing I'm finding out, that rear trans seal is really leaking and uh, this is all covered in it, so that's one thing. This should be up like that. So that should be like this. First and foremost, that's how that should be. So what I'm probably gonna have to do is take this plate off and bend this piece up some, put it on the vice grip here and bend it up some. Nothing crazy, but I need to bend it somewhat. But the rear trans here, like this is all wet under here, which has me a little concerned. Um, this is all like covered in, this is all completely covered, which I'm not too thrilled about. So I gotta figure out why it's leaking that bad. I've never seen it do that before with my other trans. Like my R154 leaked, but nothing like this. And uh, holy shit. Something got up on my exhaust and cut it or into my uh, drive shaft. Holy shit, guys. Can you see that? Check that out. That's not good. Wonder what could have done that. I'm gonna look around here a little bit and see what could have caused that. I've got solid mounts so the diff can't move at all. So, and it's in a spot where it's completely open around it. Like up here, I could say like, okay, it can move and get hit here. I think that's a little line from rubbing, 
on the rubber there, but that's not a big deal. But the rest of it shouldn't be hitting anything to cause something like that. And it's only at this one point. That is uh, very weird and it has me a little bit concerned. Okay guys, I figured out what it was and I, feel, I figured out that I've got to Dremel some parts which I'm gonna take the drive shaft out here um, and show you guys how I do that. So these might actually need to be held off to another video because I got more I wanna show you in this video uh, first and foremost because this is a little crazy as to what happened. Well, I already went full stupid, burnt my hand. My wife had to give me a boo-boo, a boo-boo cover. So she didn't even kiss it to make it feel better. How evil is she? So I went ahead and this is how I burnt myself because I'm pretty much an idiot, which if you guys have been watching my channel long enough, you already knew that. I grabbed this because, I did, as you guys can see here, I bent this up, put a bunch of heat on it to bend it up some. Well, duh, it was hot, so guess what happened when I grabbed it? Take a guess. That's right, it burnt me because I'm a fucking moron. So now we gotta take this, push this back up. Come on, there we go. Oh, come on. I don't wanna burn myself again. I hope that's not hot. Back on, so it's not perfect, but now it's hitting back here some, but. That's typical, I just need to move this mount over some and uh, it'll be all right. There we go, now it's good. That's all I need to do. Ta -da. So we're good to go now and uh, next up we gotta take this drive shaft out because, again, because of that mark there, I'm gonna have to make some clearancing above because don't want that destroying my uh, drive shaft and I wanna see what exactly it's hitting on. So we got a few marks, we got one here, we got one here and we've got like a rubbing sensation there, which I just believe is that little bit, so that should be easy. And then we gotta clean all this off from the rear diff leaking, which again, if you can see, it's all over my brand new exhaust, which is pissing me off. Always something, guys. So I got all the bolts off for the diff, but now, and I kinda already knew this, when we put it on last time, we are like, well, I hope we don't have to take it off anytime soon. Well, that was a week ago. But this bolt, when it was going on, it was destroying the threads and that won't come off. It's stuck right there, so I gotta get my grinder off cut the middle of that bolt and just take this entire clamp off. So, yeah. So I have to get a new four inch clamp co clamp by this weekend. So that's, uh, I mean, that's pretty cool, I guess. I mean, that's pretty freaking awesome as a three day weekend comes up. So hopefully I can get a four inch clamp uh, pretty quick. All right guys, so I've got the couple items grinded away there. Uh, I need to clean up this pipe from the fluid leaking. Again, if anyone has a suggestion why this transmission leaks, I just post up and it seems like it's quite common, so I cleaned up the drive shaft there. Um, again, there was a small, like, it's not, you can't faintly even see it, but it was just like there was a rubber piece or the undercoating was kind of, so I trimmed that down some, but that's all the more it ever got there. Um, and this is where it was the worst at. You can just get it with my fingernail there. This one, I can just, faintly get this with my fingernail, unlike this one, which is the whole way across. I trim this down like a good quarter of an inch because um, I don't want to take any chances. So I was told about maybe these hitting, but I checked these, these weren't. I just went ahead and put black marker on both ends just to, uh, if it does get hit and it does rub, I'll know for sure. One, the drive shaft will most likely show it, but number two, uh, it'll wear on here and show it. I went ahead and marked this in black right here because it had a shiny spot on it and I'm almost dead on. It was hitting right in the center of that, uh, which, it was just enough in this move, so if the drive shaft does hit it, I mean, it can push it up if need be. It's not gonna destroy it. Um, I wish I could pull this up just, just a little bit. The problem is, though, that controls your e-brake, so you're kind of in a catch-22 situation. And I think, and this is all above that, too, um, I think what happened was I, got, I had some wheel hop, and this came down like so. So uh, as long as I don't have wheel hop, it should do fine, because it sits up above all this stuff yet, and then the drive shaft, hit right here really hard. This is where it hit the hardest at. Uh, let's see if I can get the light off of it actually. This is where it hit the hardest at and I'm gonna put marker here yet. Um, you can see where I ground this all down here and here. I had to bend this tab up so I'm to get as much clearance. I didn't wanna have to grind on this and it just, these just barely stick below this little piece here which is the e-brake cable because I'd rather hit this metal first than this e-brake cable just to be safe. Um, but again, I don't think it will be an issue because I've been hammering it and I haven't made a problem. Uh, the only problem I think that came from this is I had a little bit of wheel hop when I tried to do a burnout and uh, I think that's what caused it. So I'm going to mark the drive shaft too uh, with marker just to make sure, but I'm going to mark all this to uh, 
just to be a backup. Well, I decided to take the muffler off and polish it up because it was covered in, well, because it rained the whole time, so the salt air and everything was sticking to it, and it had like this grime on I couldn't, I took brake cleaner to it first and it wouldn't come off and then hit it. I had my buffer in there because with, I'm not sure if you guys know, with like metal polish, it's not so much the material you use, but it's the heat you put in it. So obviously material helps, uh, but you need a thin or a light, light, light amount. Don't put it on heavy. It's kind of like wax your car. Don't put it on heavy and just give it a ton of heat. So like doing it by hand's a bitch. So if you have machine polisher or anything, you can put a ton of heat in it, you can get your stuff back. And actually this wasn't this shiny before. This almost was like a flat color. So after hitting that and this, now this area I didn't care about. I'm just this doesn't matter to me, uh, but this area here I polished up and got the tip back to being mirror polished again, which was not as easy as I thought it was going to be. That's kind of a pain in the ass, to be honest. So, but looks good. Now I just need to put it on the car and uh, I need to make a quick run to Lowe's because where's the bolts at? These lock washers here, guys, um, this is one BB gave me from his shop. The black ones are one that come with it. Um, I've used them, taking them on and off too many times. They're splitting apart, so I need to go up to Lowe's here. I think I'm gonna try to get some of these big ones just because I feel like they're a little bit more secure. Uh, if once you wrench these down, they're not going anywhere. Nothing wrong with the one Joel gives you, but they're, you can kind of tell they're meant to be used once, maybe twice. They're kind of like a one and done item. These, you can be removed a couple times and it'll be fine, but as you can see too, I don't use any Loctite on the rear diff, which I'd like to stay away from just because I remove it so much um because i'm always checking shit so let's go to lowe's uh, i'll show you guys when i get back all right guys so that fixes most of it here i got most of it back on at this point now got i just eat cheetos and i got cheetos in my teeth i hate that feeling but got the exhaust just hanging there because i broke that v-band clamp and i was gonna put it on and show you guys but my wife took the keys we have a mailbox that you have to have a key to get into because of thieves. I don't trust people, so she has that. So I can't get into the car right now or get into the box right now, which kind of sucks because I want to get it down. You guys can see here, she is a little dirty. Uh, I haven't cleaned it since I got back from Cruise Week. So that's all sight, salt, and dirt grime. And I want to wash it, foam bath it, wash it once, probably wash it again, go over everything, clean the wheels, maybe take the wheels off. Uh, Cruise Week is really hard on this car, in my opinion. Um, it's because it's salty, the air's shitty. Uh, so I want to go over everything. Uh, the only thing I probably won't spay down is the engine bay. Uh, after going to Cruise Week, though, there's a couple things I know I want to do different again for next year. This in the trunk, this hidden to, uh, for aesthetics wise, this gone. I need to go to electrical fans. Um, I just talked to a guy on Instagram called CW Boosted. I think that is a handle on Superforms also. Apparently a company called Sp Pro Speed, which everyone knows Pro Speed slash induction performance makes an electrical fan setup that actually allows for this. They offset the fans um, so that you can do this. Uh, the only thing he did say I'm going to have to do though is my factory alternator, which I have an auto TT alternator, won't work. Um, I'm going to have to get a 150 amp alternator from a Sequoia, shave it down and make it work, repin the connectors, and then put it on. Uh, it's not a big deal, but just real alternators are like $350 to $400 from like Toyota versus the ones you get at like Advanced Auto. But an alternator is not something you want failing on you, so I guess I'll sell this one since it's good, and then I'll do all that. All right, guys, again, uh, do yourself a favor. If you have a four-inch drive shaft or anything like that, check for these things. Uh, you don't want that exploding on you because if that would cut through enough, I mean, that's it. Uh, that could really physically hurt you. Uh, I've seen stuff like that, especially on a drive shaft loop. It could literally cause your car to catapult because it'll catch and dip down and jump up. You don't want that happening. So do yourself a favor, do your due diligence, check around, make sure that shit is okay. Uh, check for all your clearances and stuff. I, I would hate to see someone get severely hurt because of something like that. I'm very lucky. I'm glad, kind of glad that uh, that mount fell off because it gave me an excuse to get under the car and check everything and I'm glad I did. All right guys, thank you very much for tuning in today. Do me a big favor, go down below, check out the Facebook and Instagram. Always posting stuff way ahead of time. Also, do me that big favor and check out the merch. Uh, I've got new shirts and hats in there. I'm coming out with a whole new line here coming up. So I'm trying to sell the stuff I have now cheap. So get it cheap while you can and wait till you see the new stuff. I can't wait to show you guys. Thank you very much and I'll talk to you later. Peace.